Broadcasting live from the Wellness Wonderland, you're listening to the Wellness Wonderland Radio. I'm Katie, and each week I chat with the most inspirational people on the planet on how to stay inspired in all areas of life. As you listen, feel free to tweet at me, at Katie Dalebow, or use the hashtag Wellness Wonderland. I'd love to hear your aha moments. So grab your headphones and listen on the go, or cuddle up with a notebook as we dive in deep with authentic conversations right here in Wonderland. Welcome back to the Wellness Wonderland Radio, everybody. This is Katie, and today we have with us a woman I look up to so much. We have Ariel from Be Well with Ariel, and I'm so glad that she is on the show today. Her poise and her grace and her amazing work have inspired me from afar for a while now and a few weeks ago I finally was able to meet her in person and she was just as sweet and wonderful as I thought she would be and more. She's not only an amazing blogger, health coach, her recipes are to die for. She wears so many cool hats but she's also the creator and designer of the famous I Love Me ring and jewelry line. I have one. Our guru Gabby has one. You need one. (laughs) We'll put the link below. She is just an amazing person, a speaker, TV host for Institute of Integrative Nutrition, and she's been featured on the Dr. Oz show and Fox. She's just amazing, a jack of all trades, and somehow she masters them all with grace and poise and ease, like I said. And today, she's here in Wonderland with us for a little bit. So this is wonderful. We're going to get some advice from her on how she does it all. And it's just great to have you here, Arielle. Thank you so much for being here. So excited to be here, Katie. Cool. Okay, well, let's jump right in because, I, like I said, I've got so much I want, I want to ask you. So first of all, I think the best way to start is just briefly with your background. So you live in your own version of Wellness Wonderland for sure, and you help other people get there too. But how long did it take you to get where you are today on your wellness journey? And have you always been passionate about holistic health and cooking? Or um, was that something that you got into at some point? I was always interested in health and wellness. Um, I grew up in a house where my mother would hide the cookies from herself. So I knew that I never really wanted to be like that. But I also had this passion for just health in general. I would make, I was like seven years old and I would make my dad tape Jane Fonda videos back when Jane Fonda was, she's still fabulous, but back when Jane Fonda was actually on, you know, TV with all of her amazing exercise videos and outfits. I love and I would have my dad um, tape videos for me. So along with my TGIF shows, he would tape the Jane Fonda videos. And sometimes I would just watch them after school. Sometimes I would do them in front of the TV. Um, but I think that that kind of like started my whole um you know, interest in health and wellness and feeling really good, the actual feeling of feeling good. And then I was always, um, I always liked eating healthy. You know, we used to sat, sit around the dinner table. Um, I would sometimes play with my food, but not in like, I hope it wasn't a disgusting way, but I would just kind of play with it just because I was like fascinated by food. And when I was younger, I actually wanted to become a food stylist. And I didn't really know what that meant, um, but I kind of just wanted to like do something where I like decorated food and um, turned food into different shapes. And here I am today making, you know, food in different shapes, um, in different colors, in different styles and tastes so people can um, make it how they want to make it and how they make it so it pleases them and tastes good mm-hmm. and is healthy at the same time. I love that. That's such a beautiful story. I love that. It's it's so cool at hearing um, how you got started and, and where you are now. So that's, that's really cool. Um, going back to kind of how you got started and, and one of a, a major source of inspiration that I know we both share, um, our guru, Gabby, Gabrielle Bernstein. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you found Gabby and her work and kind of how her work has changed your your life and affected you? And maybe you could even tell us a story of when you really noticed it that her juice was working, you know? <laughs> 
Good question. So, um, my goodness, there are so many stories that I could tell when her juice was working, yes. but I love, love, love Gabby. So, um, I was first introduced to Gabby through via an email. Um, it was an event that she was putting on at the Soho house. And back then, Sex in the City was still on. It was about um, 2008, 2009. And Sex in the City was big, and she was having an event at the Soho House. And you could really go into the Soho House only if you knew a member. And at that time, I knew, like, one member. Now, a few of my friends are members. But back then, I knew one member. Wasn't really going to ask them to invite me there. But Gabrielle was having an event there. And it was $20. And she was having this event and she had this website and the email looked amazing. And I saw that she was featured in a few magazines and it just interests me. I was really drawn to it. I was drawn to her message and the title of the lecture was falling in love with your future. Mm. And that's why I was drawn to it because who doesn't want to fall in love with their future? Right. Especially at that time, I really wasn't happy. I was sitting in, you know, in front of a desk in a small room in a very, very, very corporate environment doing something that I knew I wasn't going to do forever. And when I saw this email, I was absolutely drawn to it. So I ended up going. And before that, I actually sent the email to all my friends. And I still have the email. I searched through my Gmail. Um, and so I still have that email, which is kind of funny. But I sent an email to my friends and I was like, this looks absolutely fabulous. It's only $20. Does anyone want to come with me? And my friends and I came, my friends and I went, um, and it was an amazing night. And the next day I had a mini session with Gabrielle. It was about 10 minutes. She gave me great advice. And after that, I tried to go to every single one of her lectures every month. And when I miss a month, it really makes me sad, but um, it's really become part of my life. She's definitely become part of her life. Her books have become part of her life. And my business, which is really a big part of my life, is an extension of the work that I've done with her. So I'm very grateful for my friendship with her, and I'm very grateful for uh, the, the introduction that was first made and the first event that I went to and that I haven't stopped going to. Oh. I literally, like, that almost makes me tear up just because I love Gabby so much and I love you so much and, and all of this is so inspiring to me and I couldn't agree more. And I think everybody kind of has one of those stories of how you how we found Gabby or how we found her work and um, I just think it's so beautiful to hear that. So, Ariel, you do so much and you wear so many hats um, and do so many cool things. How do you stay organized and focused on all of the things you're so passionate about right now. My goodness, I'm glad that you think that I look organized. Um, sometimes I definitely don't feel it. Um, so currently I'm a health coach. I do corporate lectures, I do supermarket tours, and I have a few private clients. Um, in addition, I have a jewelry business. A, it's a wellness jewelry business. So I sell I Love Me jewelry, the I Love Me collection, ring, rings, necklaces, and earrings, all stamped with I Love Me. So one of the ways that I stay organized and focused is that one, I write everything down. So I have a weekly list where I write my weekly goals. And on there, I have my monthly goals and of course my yearly goals. I love and that. I, what'd you say? I love that. Yeah. So um, and I love your daily list, too, that I see all over Instagram, Katie. Thank you. You make them so pretty. So I don't make my list as pretty. I make them very um, I make them very to the point and simple, but it really helps me stay focused and grounded, and it's very helpful for me to see everything on paper because I'm a very visual person. And because I'm so visual, uh, everything is always in my head, so I need to get it out of my head and onto the paper. So I usually keep it onto my computer, but I also have a journal where I write down everything that comes to mind. So if I'm you know, running on and off the train in New York, if I'm going from the jewelry district back to a health coaching client or to the supermarket, um, any anything that comes to, to my mind, I always put in my journal. 
Um, in addition, in order to stay focused, I try to always, um, I try to meditate in the morning. Um, it's not really a habit that I'm that good with, but I have been really good with it lately. And I set up a little corner in my room with a little rock salt candle and I put on my timer for like 10 minutes in the morning and I try to breathe, listen to really nice music and just think about um, the day and kind of just relax into the day and whatever comes to me comes to me. And then I try to exercise in the morning. Um, this is I perfect am, because my, my actually my next question or one of the questions for you, I we know that morning routines and rituals are so important. So I was going to ask you to walk us through yours. So this is perfect. Just continue. <laughs> so back in the day, I would always like to wake up and then go to like a 10 a.m. yoga class. And recently I've kind of switched it up. It's been a little bit, a little bit hot here in New York City, to say the least. It's very, very humid and hot now. Uh, so I find that, you know, doing some type of exercise in the morning is really good for me. But every day when I wake up, I feel different. So, you know, yesterday I felt like I wanted to do a bar class. I wanted something a little bit more, um, you know, challenging. The day before, I felt like I needed to stretch my legs and really just breathe. And I went to a yoga class. So every day when I wake up, I actually don't really know what type of exercise I'm going to do. I do what feels right for me. And that's kind of how I deal with my, you know, when I eat as well. Um, for dinner, you know, it's, it's either I'm really inspired to make a recipe or I cook what other people are in the mood for. But usually it's really what, I, what I'm craving. So if I'm craving a Mexican fiesta, then I'll whip up some healthy, um, you know, alternative to a favorite Mexican meal. Mm, I love that. I love that. It's kind of all encompassing listening to your body and to what you want and following your intuition, whether it's through food or exercise or just throughout your day. I, th I think that's super important and really cool. Exactly. So I like to keep focus. I like to keep grounded. And of course, in the morning, your morning ritual is super, super important. So getting back to your question in terms of morning ritual, um, a few of my favorite morning rituals is, number one, I have a Louise calendar, a Louise Hay calendar that I purchase every year for me and all of my friends. Uh, that's kind of like my Hanukkah gift to everyone. And I put it near my, in my kitchen. So every morning when I wake up, one of the first things I do is I look at that. And it kind of just gives me inspiration for the morning. But one of the first, first, first things that I do is I drink a cup of water. And water is really great for your digestion, really great for your skin. It's very hydrating, obviously. And in the morning, right when you wake up, it's super important to have water because it get really, really revs up your entire being, your entire body for the rest of the day. So I drink a cup of water. And then another one of my favorite rituals is, number one, using a tongue scraper in addition to brushing my teeth. Um, tongue scraping is really good for getting the toxins off of your tongue. It also helps your taste buds. Um, so sometimes, you know, people who are craving a lot of food right when they wake up in the morning, very often it's because they need to just hydrate themselves with some water, but very often it's all the gunk that's still in your mouth from, you know, sleeping for eight or so hours. So I love, love, love using a tongue scraper. And then another, another morning ritual that I love is making breakfast. I will never... Maybe not, I won't say never, but I really, really try leaving that. I try not to leave the house without eating breakfast. Um, I actually once did a, a science project on um, breakfast experiments and how breakfast affects your memory, but it really does, it really affects your body um, in a good way and in, in not such a good way if you don't have it. It really helps rev up your energy and metabolism for the day. So, in terms of morning rituals, those are probably my favorites. I love that. I love that. Okay. Well, I'm just going to ask some clarifying questions here. So I absolutely love everything what you everything that you said. And 
I actually, from your blog, I think a long time ago, I've started using a tongue scraper. Now, do you drink your cup of water? Because I do that as well, too. It was required of us in our yoga teacher training to first thing when we got up, drink a whole glass of water to stay hydrated throughout the day. And, and I do that, and I take my probiotics. But do you use your tongue scraper before you drink the water or after you drink the water? After. First thing I do in the morning is I drink my water. Cool, cool. I love that. And then, to be honest, otherwise I probably would forget. <laughs> I love that. Um, so, going back to breakfast, I love what you said there about something. And I've actually been thinking about this a lot lately. And something I've been working on um, with my coach has been um, trying to incorporate eating breakfast early in the morning. I'm just not somebody who is hungry in the morning. And I. Um, I, um, you know, I'm like, I got to oil pull, I have all these routines, I've got to do my um, warm water with lemon, you know, I have all these things where I like keep pushing breakfast off, but I really, you know, want to have it earlier and give my body something earlier in the morning. But I have a couple questions for you when it comes to breakfast. Um, and I, I think you kind of said this, but you make it part of your spiritual practice and you part of your morning practice. Um, do you usually have the same thing every day or do you really listen to your body with breakfast? Like, do you have a couple staple breakfasts that you could tell us about that work for you? Sure. Yes. Always listen. I always, always, always listen to my body. So there are some days when I'm not very hungry either. And, uh, you know, by all means, don't force feed yourself breakfast. Do what works for your body. If you like eating a little bit later in the morning, that's totally fine as well. Um, but having having breakfast is important because it sets you off for the rest of the day. Um, you know, in, in nutrition school, we learned eat breakfast like a queen, lunch like a king, and dinner like a prince. So meaning eat a medium-sized breakfast, eat a large lunch, and eat a smaller dinner. So if you're eating a smaller dinner and... You know, if you eat a smaller dinner and then you go to sleep about two or three hours after, which is, you know, usually recommended. Now, sometimes it's absolutely not realistic, but of course, that's really the recommended, um, you know, way of way of eating. So your body is able to metabolize and restart throughout the night. So if you eat a small dinner, by the time your body restarts and redigests everything, or not redigest everything. Once you're starting, once your body restarts during the night and re-energizes throughout the night, by the time you wake up, you should probably be hungry. Now there are some people who might feel nauseous when they wake up or not hungry at all, and that just means you know eat it, eat it when you when you are hungry, and then you can kind of space out your meals a little bit later in the day. I love that. That's really great. So for you, what are some um, what are some of your favorite things that that you have in the morning to eat? So um, I love cereal. So sometimes I have brown rice krispies with some almond milk. Yeah. And my favorite toppings are some chia seeds, really high in fiber, really high in vitamins and minerals. And I love chia seeds. Um, also hemp seeds. Uh, they're really high in protein. And I kind of like that nutty flavor. So I always sprinkle that on. I, I sometimes like crunch in the morning. So when I'm craving something crunchy, I'll have a cereal like brown rice krispies. Um, I used to love rice krispies when I was younger. So brown rice krispies is a healthier version. It's made of brown rice. Um, of course, rice is gluten free, so it won't give you too much digestive upset. Um, but I feel like you know the the mixture of the brown rice krispies and the chia seeds and hemp seeds um, and almond milk are pretty energizing for me. I love that. It's so. Your mornings sound amazing. Could you talk us through maybe the last three things you do in the evening before bed, kind of some of your evening rituals, how you wind down for the day? Sure. So on a good night when I remember really to take care of myself, and of course I try to always remember to take care of myself, but on a really, really wonderful night, what I'll do is when I get home, I'll Sometimes get into bed, I'll light a candle next to my bed. Sometimes I light a flameless candle just in case that I fall asleep. That's a good idea. Um, sometimes I'll 
go onto Pinterest and pin things. I'm planning a wedding now. So I try to make the process as fun as possible. So sometimes either it's on my couch or it's in my bed. Um, and I look through beautiful photos of things that I imagine to be at my wedding. Or I read a book. Um, and I'm not such a reader. So uh, I'm not such like, you know, I, I don't really love reading novels. Um, I actually do love reading novels, but I'm not that good at finishing novels. Mm -hmm. So what I often do, I have a lot of books uh, near my bed and whatever I'm kind of feeling that night, I'll take out and read a passage or two. And I usually get pretty sleepy um, and then I and then I fall asleep. Um, but one of my evening rituals is that I always put on face lotion, um, face cream, face oil. I go through three different kinds. I go through pure organic virgin coconut oil, which is antibacterial, super hydrating, and it's great for your skin. So I, I either slather that onto my skin in, um, as an alternative to face lotion or I use a um, one of my favorite lotions. It's made of shea butter and coconut oil from a company called SW Basics. Or I use another cream that's handmade by an herbologist that's made of raw honey, which is also antibacterial, and jojoba oil, and a few other things. So that's definitely the morning rituals that I that I look forward to. Mm, I love Putting that. The lotion on, lighting a candle, if that may be, and reading some kind of book passage or looking at beautiful photos. That sounds amazing. And congratulations for your wedding. That's so exciting. Thank you. Yes, it is exciting. So um, let's talk food a little bit, if that's cool with you. Sure. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Okay, so I just saw these coconut water bars on your blog, which I'm obsessed with, which I'll post the link below because they're amazing. But what I really love so much about your recipes is that they're, for me, they're amazing because they're so simple, they're so healthy, and they're so freaking good. And they make that balance of all three really important. Um and I think that that balance is really important in people's lives. So um, how much when you go out and plan your day and your week, how much of your week or day do you plan when it comes to your diet and staying balanced? Um, do you kind of know what you're going to eat for the day or for the week? Or um, do you have any tips there on staying organized when, with your diet when you have so much going on? That's a really good question. Um, for me, you know, I the, the way that I go about eating food is that I eat what I crave and I eat what my body needs. Um, so, you know, do I know if I'm going to have a green juice today? Maybe not. I, I don't know. Um, and I don't very often have a green juice every day. Would I like to? Absolutely. Um, but I like to, you know, be realistic. I also like to um, stay focused on other things and not make you know, food is one of the priorities in my life just because it it keeps me feeling really good and it gives me the energy to do what I need to do in this world, to help other people when it comes to food, to create jewelry that's, you know, that, that is loving and that will remind people to love themselves. And so food, food is food is energy, food is power, but I try not to think too much about it. Now, for the people out there that do think a lot about it, what I would definitely recommend is try to have a, and this, this is what I do for myself, um, no matter where I'm eating, I always try to have a vegetable um, with whatever I'm eating, a vegetable or a fruit with whatever I'm eating. So very often, you know, of course, I definitely recommend greens, um, but, you know, being realistic, sometimes greens are not, you know, kale and collards and red chard they're not available at some restaurants they're not available at some supermarkets um and they're not available at you know some takeaway places that you might go with a friend to eat so i try to be realistic but i always try to have a vegetable at every meal and that kind of helps me staying really really healthy but more so than that i always try to really savor what i'm eating and I think that that's really important when it comes to food, because very often so many people are 
you know, they get crazy about what to eat, how much to eat, where to eat it, how to eat it. And very often it's just about really savoring what you're eating. So no matter if it's a, you know, if it's a sweet treat um, or if it's a super healthy, delicious, you know, salad, yeah, really chewing and savoring the tastes in your mouth really help enjoy, you enjoy the meal. So I guess that doesn't really answer your question, but no, I just kind of to bring that up because um, you know, as much as I really don't plan out my meals, I really, I want to stress the importance of that. I really enjoy everything that I put into my mouth and I really try to look for foods that will love me back. So as much as I don't plan out what I'm eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I always try to have foods in my refrigerator and my pantry that, you know, when I come home starving and I look in the refrigerator Um, there are, you know, already cut up red pepper slices, or when I come home and I'm starving after, you know, a nutrition lecture and I need to eat (laughs) myself, um, you know, there aren't like unhealthy cookies in the pantry. Oh my gosh. This is such a perfect, this is such a perfect segue. Actually, I'm going to just like interrupt you because literally my next question was a little scenario for you. Um, you ready for it? Yeah, go. Okay. So it's 8 PM. You've had a long day. You've been doing jewelry running around and you've been lecturing and you're beat and starving. What do you come home and eat slash make or what do you do? Good question. So give you an example of what I did last night. So um, yesterday I made a big pot of brown rice pasta. I love pasta and a lot of my clients love pasta. So brown rice pasta is one of my favorite things to eat. Um, The ingredients are just brown rice and water, and um, it is a little processed because it's, you know, processed into pasta. However, it's a really great alternative to white pasta that really doesn't do anything for your body. So this one has a lot of fiber, and it tastes exactly like a pasta that you would get in an Italian restaurant. So my tip is always make big batches of whatever you're going to make. So in this case, I made a big batch of brown rice pasta. I always keep a good quality tomato sauce. Um, This one was a, it's a local tomato sauce uh, that I found at Whole Foods. So at Whole Foods, they have many different kinds of tomato sauces. And of course you can make a tomato sauce yourself, but let's be realistic at, you know, eight o'clock or later when you get home at night, you're not going to like whip up some, you know, tomatoes and (laughs) suck them with onions. So I like to be realistic and I always keep a good, delicious quality tomato sauce in my pantry and in my refrigerator. So I had that on hand and I always keep spices on hand. So last night I put a little bit of dulse, which is a kind of seaweed. I love it. Love dulse. And um, it kind of adds a little bit of salt to it too. I always put I always keep sea salt in my refrigerator, um, matches the mineral content of your blood. So it's good quality salt. It's not going to make you bloated. So I put that, I put a little bit of that on my meal and I always keep local um, free range eggs in my refrigerator as well. So I'm not a vegan. Um, I do like eggs and I always try to, um, you know, I always keep eggs in my refrigerator just because if, I'm craving eggs in the morning. I can have it then, or it's just kind of a good uh, throw in protein to whatever you're eating. So whether or not you're having like an Asian stir fry, um, you could kind of just throw it in. Or if you're having a, you know, Italian dish, you could toss that in too. So last night was a good example. I used leftover um, brown rice pasta that I had from the night before, and I put a little bit of tomato sauce. I just heated that up really quickly. And I scrambled some eggs, which take literally three minutes to make, scrambled some eggs with a little bit of sea salt. And the entire meal took about probably no more than five minutes just to heat up and eat. Mm, Amazing. That's so helpful for so many people. Thank you. Um, Okay, so my next question is kind of a big one. What is the biggest nutrition or health or holistic health misconception you feel like you're constantly always clearing up for people? It's not about calories. 
It's not about the fat grams. It's not about the nutrition facts. It's about the ingredients. So I have a lot of clients come to me and they say, but coconut oil is so high in saturated fat and it's so high in calories. But really your body will recognize the ingredients. It won't really recognize the amount of calories. So when, when your body is trying to metabolize something, it's metabolizing the actual ingredients in it, right? And when we put things into our body, it's really about what what ingredients you're putting into your body. It is about the calories, but it's more, because calories are energy, but it's more about what ingredients are you putting into your body? How can your body actually digest this? And putting in high quality, clean ingredients so your body can energize itself in the simplest way possible. I love that, that's amazing. Um, so going off of that and all of these amazing things that you're clearing up for people, and I think we've made such strides in holistic wellness and nutrition, um, recently as a society, but where do you see holistic health and nutrition going in 10 years and where would you like to see it? You know, it's amazing because it's really, really, really it's blossoming and I'm so excited about all the new brands and companies and entrepreneurs that are just, you know, kind of like sparking up around even the world. On Pinterest, I just saw an amazing Australian company that's coming out with, um, you know, food delivery for babies. Um, how amazing is that? And they use local vegetables. It's just such an incredible idea. Um, there are, you know, back in the day, there were like three restaurants in New York that, were my like go-to places. And this is before, you know, the juice craze. And this is before the gluten-free craze. And this is before like really the health craze started. But now there are places popping up on like every two blocks, which is so exciting for the people who really appreciate good quality food. Where do I see it going? I hope it goes mass market. Um, you know, the Dwayne Reeds, the, the Walgreens, they're starting to come out with coconut water and, um, Amy's frozen food, frozen food, uh, options and organic options and, um, really healthy, you know, even just like Lara bars, which are good quality, um, or better quality types of, you know, on the go bars. So I think that, I think that health food's becoming more mass market, and I'm really, really, really excited to see what comes up, comes about. Me too, yeah. and I couldn't agree more. And I just think um, I recently saw Joe Cross speak, and he was saying, you know, every time we spend our money on something, we're voting, and I think that's so cool because the more people, you know, involve themselves in, in themselves in health related activities, the more it'll be available to us. And and I just think that that's that's amazing. So absolutely, yep. Cool. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to a tasting um, at a new restaurant that just opened at a really awesome, cool kind of mainstream hotel in the city, and it's a salad place. Oh my and god! That, how cool is that? And that neighborhood needs more salad, so I'm so excited to check it out, and I'm so excited to tell people to go there. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! That's so cool. All right. Well, this has been amazing. Do you have time for a couple quick fire questions as we wrap? Yep. Go for it. Okay. Perfect. All right. Ready? Just say the go. first thing that comes to your mind for these. Some okay. of them are different lengths than others, but we'll just go for it. So what is your favorite color? Blue. Favorite yoga pose? Downward dog. Favorite day of the week? Wednesday. Favorite hour of the day? 2 p.m. Favorite fruit? Raspberries. Favorite vegetable? Kale. Favorite New York City meal? Candle Cafe. Nice. It's only tofu I'll ever eat, and it's there. It's like a tofu club sandwich. Yum. Favorite way to relax? Breathe. Mm, and nice. yoga. And lighting a candle. <laughs> and painting my nails. <laughs> Favorite vacation? 
Fire Island. Nice. What inspires you most? That is a good question. I'm sorry this isn't a quick fire answer because a lot no. of things inspire me. That's okay. My visions and hope inspire me. And Gabrielle Bernstein inspires me. And my nephew inspires me. Beautiful. Where and when were you the happiest? Right now. Speaking to you. Mm. I like to live in the present. And I, I like to that. make every moment happy. Beautiful. Your favorite go-to snack on the go? Raw almonds. Yum. Favorite beauty ritual? Slathering on coconut oil before I go to sleep on my face. Nice. What is one food you eat every single day? If there is one. Or most days. <laughs> Chia seeds. Favorite song? Anything by Mary J. Blige. <laughs> Love it. Or in DRE. That's beautiful. Okay, now I have just a couple or questions, okay? Okay. Almond milk, you have to choose one, okay? Almond milk or coconut milk? Coconut milk. Juice or smoothie? Smoothie. Avocado or tahini? Avocado. Lime or lemon? Lemon. Hemp seeds or chia seeds? Chia seeds. Nice. Okay. Well, that was just so much fun and absolutely amazing. And I am just so grateful again that you stopped by Wonderland today. So just before we wrap, will you tell us kind of what you're most excited about in your life right now? What's next for you and where people can find you? Oh my goodness. Sure. So I'm so excited about my new global I Love Me collection. Um, all of my jewelry is stamped with I Love Me. Again, as I mentioned before, to remind women to love themselves and take care of themselves. And I just stamp them in all different languages. So I just stamp them, the I Love Me stamp in Spanish, Hebrew, Japanese, Chinese, French, Portuguese. And I'm so excited to get them out into the world. Um, so that's really, that's one thing I'm excited about. And another thing that I'm super excited about is that I have plans to write a children's nutrition book this year. So ah, super excited about both. That is so cool. I'm like fist pumping. That's amazing. Ah, I'm There's fist such a need too. for it. Totally. Such a need. Such a need. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Well, Arielle, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for listening. And we will put all of her links below so you can get in touch with her. Everybody needs an I Love Me ring. Buy one for yourself and everyone and follow all of the amazing things she's doing. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Arielle. Thank you, Katie. Biggest smile on my face. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening. You made it all the way to the end. I'll be back next week, but until then, let's stay inspired and keep this conversation going. So tweet at me, at Katie Jailbout, and our guest with your aha moments from this conversation. And like the Wellness Wonderland on Facebook, so we can all hang out there and discuss how inspired we are and how we'll apply it in our daily lives. And never miss another episode or post from me by signing up for email updates on thewellnesswonderland.com. See you back in Wonderland.